Bay Divers, it's Alec Pierce. Alec Pierce Scuba Tech Tips. Now, here's what I've decided to do. I've had so many people uh, comment and ask me, how do I buy a good mask? Uh, how do I buy a snorkel? How do I buy a computer? I, so what I'm going to do is every once in a while, I'm going to throw in a how to buy tech tip. It's not really a tech tip. It's just some suggestions on what to look for. Okay, you call whatever you want. But I think it's a good idea. People have been asking me, and it's a good idea. I have been buying and selling scuba gear for a very, very long time. So I may have a different perspective on things. I can at least tell you what's commonplace, what's normal, if there's such a thing as normal, what is usual in the industry. And maybe with that information, it might help you a little bit. Maybe it'll, some of you folks have been asking for some help. Hopefully it helps you. Okay, so today we're going to look at my first buying scuba gear. Mass snorkel fins, all right? And very commonly, this makes sense because very commonly, it's the first items that divers buy, mass snorkel fins. Some, some divers buy them for their training course. Uh, some divers buy them for the training course because they want to. Some divers buy them for the training course because they are forced to by the store that they're working with or whatever they're taking the course. And that used to be very common. When you went into a dive store to, be, to, to, to take a, a scuba diving course to become a diver, it was very, very common for the dive store to say, okay, you have to buy mass stroke defense. I did that too. I've had many, many dive stores, probably about 20 different dive stores. And I did that too. When you came in to sign up for a, a scuba course, you had to buy mass stroke defense and boots. You needed it for the course anyway. Uh, and some of the newer dive stores don't do that. Some of the more sophisticated, modern dive stores don't do that. They supply everything so that you're not in a position where you have to buy. You don't feel pressured to buy. Now, through the training program, uh, th those dive stores will then give you advice on what you should have, what's going to make your diving more enjoyable and safer and what you should have, and give you an opportunity to work with them to choose it if you want to. Anyway, that's just a little bit of background on it. Generally speaking, however, divers fairly early on get their own mask and snorkel and fins, and there's good reasons for that, by the way. That package, mask, snorkel, and fins, is often called personal gear, because it is personal. There's nothing personal about a scuba tank. When you go scuba diving, a tank is a tank, is a tank, is a tank. An 80 cubic foot aluminum tank, whether you're diving in the Great Lakes, or in, in California, or in Florida, in the Caribbean, it's all the same place, no matter where you are, it's the same tank. I'll be made by the same people. So you rent those tanks, or they're given to you on the boat charter, a tank is not very personal. But it's different. A mask goes over your eyes, goes across your nose, you see. It has to fit your face. Everybody's face is different. There's nobody in the world that has a face just like mine. Stop the smiling out there. I can see that. <laughs> so everybody's face is different. I have a very wide forehead and very protruding cheekbones and a big nose and uh, so on. So the mask that will fit Kevin certainly won't fit me. And the mask that I wear certainly won't fit you, uh, whoever you are watching. So the mask is very personal. Also, it's nice from a sanitary hygiene point of view. When you blow your nose, or you equalize. Oh, you know what I'm talking about. Same with the snorkel. The snorkel you put in your mouth. People say, I don't want that in my mouth. It's been even if you rinse it. Because don't forget, people have been blowing up and down, maybe coughing up and down the tube. So the whole tube, not just the mouthpiece, can, you know, have, what's the word, residue from the previous user. Okay, you get in this picture. I don't want to be too graphic. So it's nice to have your own mask and snorkel. And once again, fins. Usually, and the reason I suggest you get fins too is very commonly in dive stores, you'll get a package. So you get a mask, you pay for it. You get a snorkel, you pay for it. You get a mask and snorkel and fins, you get a full package of personal gear. Most dive stores will have some type of a package price, and it can be pretty substantial. I know some stores that give you as much as 30% off if you buy all of those items. So mask, snorkel, and fins is a very common first purchase. Let's talk about that for just a minute. I want to deal with each one of those items separately because there are separate items and they all have their own characteristics. So let's first of all take a look at a mask. Now in many, many people, they, look, they think about a scuba diving mask, they see something in their mind's eye just like this. And this is a scuba diving mask, okay? A mask have glass, goes to the front. Yeah, I know, I'm just kidding you. Okay, so they have glass and they have a skirt, a frame, and a strap. Four parts to a mask. Glass, a skirt, frame, and a strap. Four parts to it. And they make a combination like this. Now this particular mask, as an example, is a very big mask. You see, it's very big, even on my big head. So there are different sizes of masks. There are also different styles. This has one piece of glass across there. Almost all modern masks have a nose that protrudes. You see how the nose sticks out? 
the protrudes, and that's good because when you're diving, you need to equalize. If you don't know this, you'll learn about this. Mm -hmm. Most of you will know already. You have to be able to reach in there and hold that nose, whether with one finger or with two fingers. You have to hold your nose to equalize your ears. They'll all have a skirt. All modern masks will have double seal, seal on the outside, seal on the inside. And both of those seals need to touch the skin so they form a good solid seal to your face to keep water out. All the masks will have a strap, and the, the conventional straps now have a split on the back, like this. So it'll go over the bump. All divers have a bump on the back of your head right here. Feel it. If you have a bump on the back, then you'll be a good diver. Anyway, and they have a way to adjust the straps. Most modern masks have a quick adjustment. So if you want to make it longer, you just squeeze. You see, and it goes longer. And to make it shorter, you just pull and it goes shorter. So it's much simpler than it was in the old days when all the masks were black rubber and, uh, and the, the straps were held on by wire clips. It was really tough. And uh, so this is a pretty typical mask. How do you know if it's a good mask for you? You have to do two things. You have to try it, first of all. That's obvious. So you actually try the mask on your face. <clears throat> And then you need to try it in the water, because it can change in the water. If you put the snorkel in your mouth or the regulator in your mouth, your mouth shape changes, and it can make the mask not fit as well. You have to try both things. Let me give you an idea on fit on a mask, and your local dye store will help you with this. If, they're, if it's a good store, they'll actually help you to choose a mask. They'll be able to look at your face and choose a couple of masks and have them try it on. The important thing is that these two seals do touch the skin. You don't want the seal coming across your eye. If the mask is too small, it'll cut across your eye and won't seal. So you, what you do is you take the mask like so, put it on your face like so, see comfortably. Suck in. It should stick to the face. And look into a mirror. When you do this, look into a mirror. And you can look inside. You can see that that inside seal in here. It's actually touching skin as you're coming around, not cutting across your eye. So if that seems pretty good to me, then put the strap on and snug it up and look around a little bit. They're nice and big and bright modern masks. Oh, looks pretty good. And then, if you can, try it. If they have a pool in the store, they might let you try it in the pool. At the very least, do your best. And a, a really good dye store will do this anyway. At the very least, get, get, see if they won't give you the opportunity to try it. I should take it diving. Tell them you'll keep it in really good shape, but you actually want to try it while diving. And if it proves to be a problem, if it leaks or gets uncomfortable and hurts, you'd like to be able to bring it back in exchange for another mask. Most good dive stores will do that for you. Okay, so try that. There's a typical mask. No, I'm going to show you another mask. <coughs> here's a, here's a, a newer design, a little more sophisticated, newer technology. It's all the same components, glass, skirt, Frame, strap, the same stuff, it's all there. However, what's different about it? Well, first of all, it has two lenses, good or bad. Well, in actual fact, although a lot of people will pick up the single lens and say, I want one single lens so there's nothing in the middle. Well, that nothing in the middle doesn't help. These lenses are so close to your eyes, it's like a pair of glasses that's sitting on the bridge of your nose, not out here at the tip. So this mask is extremely close. You see how far out the nose pocket sticks? Way, way out. The glass is really close to your face. It's really close to your eyes. It's like you wear a pair of glass. You actually get better vision, better peripheral vision with a two lens mask generally than you get with a big single lens mask. Okay, what else is different? Oh, you, first of all, you've already seen that the nose pocket sticks out, easier to grasp. And you notice that the skirt on this particular mask, <clears throat> this is a Cressy mask, excellent mask. On this particular mask, the skirt is very deep. It goes a long ways back. Now, this is great for people with narrow faces and people with wide faces because the skirt on this mask goes way around your temple. You see back here where it's fairly smooth skin, you get a good seal. If it goes across your eye line, it won't seal. But this mask, watch from the side when I put this one on. Watch this. It goes way back. I get a great seal with this mask. This mask is also unique. 90% of the masks on the market are like this. Glass, nose, you see? The perpendicular, right? So you're looking straight ahead. That's the way they, they are. That's the way it's supposed to be, right? Well, not necessarily. I thought so for years. I can't believe they still make masks. But look at, look at this mask again. Look at this mask. Nose, glass. It's at an angle. How did they do that? Well, all they did, quite frankly, was make the skirt shallower at the end. So that glass, that skirt, on the cheekbone here, is the glass is really close. Right here, it's almost on your cheekbone. Nice skirt to protect it, but it's very, very close to your eyes. 
Benefit? Yeah, benefit. First of all, the glass is close to your eyes. We already mentioned this, so you get better vision. You can see really, really well. Secondly, this is so close to your eyes that it has very little space inside. So you're less likely to get a mask squeeze. If you don't know about a mask squeeze, it's good you don't know about it, but you should know that you can get a mask squeeze. A mask squeeze is, is where the pressure is so great that the air inside the mask actually compresses and it squeezes the mask against your face. That is not a common problem because most people, as you're, as you're diving and equalizing and so on, you're putting air into the mask, but it can happen. Less likely with this mask. Also, it's so small inside, if you do get water in it, and I don't care how good the mask is, how expensive it was, all masks will leak occasionally, you'll get a bit of water in it, if it doesn't hold very much water. To clear this mask, that's about, uh, that's about a half a gallon. Maybe not that much, but it's going to take a lot of work to clear all the water out of this mask. This mask, a little snort, done, it doesn't hold very much. And again, it still has those quick adjustment, pull to make it tighter, lift a little tad to make it a great strap on the back too. So look at different masks. Don't be too quick to say, I want a big mask with a big window. Not necessarily the best. Listen to your local dive store expert. They really should know, uh, and, and they should be able to help you with the masks and help you with it. But there's a couple of tips for you. Next, you need a snorkel. Snorkels are simple too. They've become much more sophisticated over the years. There's no longer as a piece of garden hose. Now they look more like this. Again, they're all made of, like the mask, made of unbreakable. Now, hyperallergenic materials, pure silicone, don't be looking at plastic masks at a, at a box store and so on. Go to a dive store, get, get good material, pure silicone, hyperallergenic and so on. And a snorkel is pretty simple, as you know, you know how it works. I do have to explain how it works. Mouth in here and tube out of the water. Yeah, okay, simple. And uh, most good morgles will have, most snorkels will have a replaceable mouthpiece. Again, a, a good snorkel, brand name scuba snorkel. Your big box stores, they may not be the case. They may not be replaceable, and if they are, you probably can't get the mouthpiece. So most uh, modern masks, uh, snorkels, sorry, have a, have a replaceable mouthpiece. They almost all have a purge valve down here, this little reservoir, you see, underneath the, the bottom here of the mouthpiece. The tube comes down and there's a little area in here. The air goes around past that. And a little bit of water can sit down in there. And so water gets in and everyone so blow into it and the water comes out through this one-way valve. It's pretty slick. They have this flexible here usually. And this is particularly good for scuba divers because when your scuba regular is in your mouth, you don't want this to stay out of the way. You see, that's what that's for. They'll have a clip, a clip to attach it to the mass strap. This is a nice clip because this clip actually detaches, you see. This piece here, you see how easy that is? This piece here, <laughs> squeeze and it pops off. This stays on the mass strap. There's the rest on the snorkel. When you want to put them together, you put them together and snap it in. I'm not sure why you'd take it apart, but if you want to, you can. And this particular snorkel is straightforward. It comes up, ends in the opening. It has a little baffle on here. This is what's called a semi-dry. Older snorkels just have a round tube, just open tube. I guess they're never dry. <laughs> anyway, this is a semi-dry, a baffle on there. So if, if a wave comes and hits this, that water may not go down the tube. It may, may not. It helps a little bit to keep the water up. The next step up from that snorkel is exactly the same. Look, exactly the same snorkel. Removable mouthpiece, all that's exactly the same. Clip the whole thing. But look at here, this is gonna, this is a dry snorkel. Now you old divers, divers over 40, 50. Okay, you may remember the dry valves. Ping pong balls. Yeah, we had a little curve and a ping pong ball. And when you went under the water, the ping pong ball went up and closed off the tube occasionally. <laughs> this is the same thing, but modern. And it actually works really well. I was surprised. I don't like dry snorkels generally as a, on principle mainly because the old ones never worked for me. But these are really, I've used these, they're really good. So when you, if you go beneath the surface, that little black knob in there, that little black float goes up, shuts off the tube. So you don't get water in the snorkel. It's really quite nice. A wave or even water, and so the snorkel stays dry. And now largely, don't count on it every time, it can leak a bit. So be careful when you first get used to it. But this is what a modern snorkel looks like. And of course, needless to say, you can get them in matching colors. Of course, it's 2016. Of course you can. Uh, so they come together. So again, once again, uh, take a look at, uh, go to your dive store, uh, talk to the experts at the dive store, and look at the different masks and, uh, and snorkel combinations. But that's a couple of tips that might help you a little bit. Okay? Now, let's take a look at fins, because there is some information about fins that uh, might be of interest to you, or at least help you to, to, to understand about fins. This, is, this fin is a fin that you've probably seen. This is a very common fin. This is the kind of fin we sell them in dive stores too. Very, very common in warm water. So if you live in Florida or south of Florida, far south as Australia, 
uh, no souther, more, no f souther, no farther south than that. But anyway, warm water. If you live in warm water, this fin might be more than adequate because these are only good in warm water. They're only good in warm water because you can't put any protection on your foot. You see this foot pocket, beautifully soft, really, really nice and soft. You put your foot in this and it's recently snug on your foot. And then off you go, just like that. But you can't put any protection, so your foot, your bare foot, is exposed to the water. Not a big deal if the water is warm. But in northern climates, in North America, in Europe, and, and, and far, far south, you need to have something on your foot to protect your foot. So this type of fin, called a full foot fin, that makes sense, is not that common among scuba divers, and I'll explain why in a moment. But they're good fins, and you can still get decent quality full foot fins. They're almost not 100%, but they're close to 100% synthetic. Mass and snorkels, 100% synthetic. Nothing natural, no rubber anymore, so it never deteriorates. And some dive stores actually give a guarantee on this personal gear. Believe it or not, a mask and snorkel and fins, a lifetime guarantee, even against breakage, because they're so well made now. They're really, really good. Um, fins do have a little bit of rubber in them to make them more flexible, but it's largely synthetic. They should last forever. A decent fin will last forever. Fairly stiff, not too stiff, but fairly stiff. And again, you need to try them. Now, obviously, you need to get the foot pocket to fit your foot easily and comfortably, slips on and off easily and comfortably, and then the blade that is the right size for your foot, although the blade size does depend on the foot size. So if you have a small foot, you'll get a little smaller blade and so on. So a full foot fin does serve a purpose. However, scuba divers, generally speaking, scuba divers need protection for their foot. Even if you're diving in warmer waters, it's nice to have protection for your foot. If you're diving in cold waters, we wear a wetsuit boot. The wetsuit boot is called the wetsuit boot because it goes with the wetsuit. You see, in cold water, we wear a wetsuit. Wetsuit keeps us warm in cold water. And, uh, and then you wear it. Now, by the way, I should point out that cold water doesn't mean cold. Cold water means 75. If it was any colder, lower than 75 degrees, it's a lot of water in the world, then we would consider that cold water. So if you're diving in, in the caves in Florida, or if you're diving in California, in the kelp for sure, or if you're diving in Galapagos, places like that, the Red Sea. We were in the Red Sea not too long ago. Oh, darn it, I was glad I had my wetsuit and, and boots. In those places, you may very well find that you would want to wear a wetsuit of some sort. And if you have a wetsuit to protect your body, you'll almost certainly have wetsuit boots to protect your feet. So you get a wetsuit boot. And this is just like buying a pair of shoes. You get this in size 9 or size 7, whatever it is. You put it on, you zip it up, and your foot is toasty warm. Equally important, maybe more so, is the fact that now your foot's protected. Ah, rubber, rubber soles, see the treads on there, rubber soles, so now you can walk around, you can walk down to the boat, over the rocks, over the coral, down to the boat, walk along the dock, you know what docks are like sometimes, you can step onto the boat, boats are slippery, this gives you really good traction, step on, so this actually protects you. Now what do you do? Because this boot will not fit into a full foot fin. No, well now you get a scuba type fin, you get a fin like this. A fin like this looks just like the last fin, doesn't it? Well, it's not exactly the same. It's yellow, yes, and it has a blade, and it has a foot pocket. Ah, look it up here. It has adjustable straps. And the reason it has adjustable straps is that you now put your boot inside. This is on your foot. Picture your foot in there. Boot goes inside like so. Strap comes up the back like so. And then you snug this up just a little wee bit, and you're all set to go. Off you go. And with this combination, you can fin for hours. Because you see, this boot is relatively thick neoprene. Its boot protects you from the fin. This is not a toy. This is heavy, heavy stuff. Soft, maybe around the foot, but not really soft. And if you tried to wear these fins without these boots, you'd very soon have sore, sore feet. So the boot now protects you, your foot from the fin, and off you go. And the fins, these fins, these strap fins, scuba fins, or strap fins are called, are usually a little more substantial than the full foot fins. A little stiffer, a little larger maybe, a little better built. See the ribs and so on in there. And, and so this is the kind of combination that we would normally use for scuba diving. We would use this down south as well. First of all, these fins are better, so in, in terms of propulsion and, and power and so on, so they help you when you're diving, and, and the, the boot protects you from the things that are down there. We have boats, and we have coral, and rocks, and we have things underwater that can nip and bite at you, and also the boot protects you from the fin itself. Now, if you want to, if you dive almost mainly, entirely down south, you can get a, a smaller boot 
This boot, you see, it doesn't have the tall ankle on it, doesn't have the zippers, a little thinner material, but it still has that great rubber sole so you can walk around. I've seen divers on trips in the South Pacific with us, and they put these on at the beginning of the trip, and they haven't taken them off. Like on the island tour, on the bus, the boat, the diving, everything else. I think they'll throw them away at the end of the trip. But uh, anyway, they, they're, they're great. They're very comfortable. And they will still work inside these strap-type scuba fins, you see? And off you go. So there are a couple of different types of boots, and that'll be depending on the type of diving you're doing. Okay? Pretty straightforward. Let me show you this fin. Yeah, this is a neat fin. Whoa, whoa, jumping, eh? This is great for night diving. You don't need to have a light. <laughs> no, you still do. But this is just a newer style of fin. 100% synthetic once again, and it has some really neat features. First of all, it's extremely light. The nature of this material makes it very, very light. Lighter than a conventional scuba or strap type fin, almost as light as a full foot fin. Just a very, very light fin. Good for packing, also good for finning. You don't want a very heavy fin for a recreational finning. Uh, you know, people say, well, it doesn't matter if it's a big heavy fin or not, it's neutral in the water. Well, maybe, but remember that every time you kick, you have to start that fin. If it's heavy, it's harder to start it. And then you have to stop it. That takes effort. Then you have to restart it. How many times through a dive? Every time you start and stop that fin, the weight of the fin will determine how much effort it takes. It takes a lot of effort. So these fins are very, very light. Also, these are extremely efficient. This is the Scuba Pro Nova fin. Very, very popular fin. Not cheap, but very popular fin. And they have done some great research. You notice how the whole fin is part of the blade. Wow. You notice how it has 727, 727, 737. Anyway, whatever, that airplane wingtips to make it more efficient, to keep the flow of water straight back. It also has this fin will actually bend. If you kick too hard, which is usually a waste of energy, this fin actually bends. And at the end of the kick, that comes back. So it actually conserves that energy you put in and gives it back to you later. Other than that, it's pretty conventional, except for one thing. Let me show you this. This is pretty neat. You put your boot in, and then you grab the fin strap, and you just pull. Ah, that's bungee cords in there. Bungee. It's like a bungee cord. Very, very strong bungee cord. So there's no clips, no snaps, nothing else. And if you have the right combination of fin pocket size, and bungee cord size, these are very easy to use and very, very comfortable. So you don't have the snaps and the cups and everything else. So this is a, a very, very nice fin. You might, if your local dive store has something like this, you might want to consider that. So there you go. Mass snorkel fins and boots. I do want to mention one more thing that might come up. Personal gear. Computers. Every diver has to have a computer. We just did a playlist a short while ago about choosing and buying computers. So what's happening now is that personal gear Mass, snorkel, fins, and boots. We talked about fins and boots there, and computer. There really ought to be five items in your personal gear list, even as a brand new diver. As a brand new diver, you're using computers and training in the class, in the pool, and open water dives. Many, many resorts require computers for diving now, so start thinking, you divers out there, start thinking about a computer as being essential gear, part of your personal gear. And it's personal because this is your computer has your information, your logged dives and everything else in there. So it's something to keep in the back of your mind. Uh, if you know, if you want to know about buying computers and look for that playlist, I forget the name of it, probably buying computers, uh, but take a look at that. But I want to just point that out, that the computer is now becoming part of the personal gear package. So there's some ideas on masks and snorkels and fins and boots. Go to a good dive store, ask them for your help. Maybe some of this will give you a little bit of you know, some ideas and you find out if they're good or not. I'm fitting it, don't be afraid to fit several and try them. See if you can try them in their pool or, the, or, or see if they won't let you try them out until, until you get the one that works. You find a good mask, it works. 99% of the time, you're way ahead of the average. Don't lose it. Hang on to it. They're not inexpensive, first of all, and it's nice to get one that fits really well. I hope this has been interesting. Maybe there's some ideas in there that, uh, that you find useful, and or maybe it's generating some comments. You have some comments or questions, send them in to me. I love that. I always do better if I'm answering a comment or a question. Okay, how to buy mass snorkel fins and boots. Alec Pierce, scuba tech tips. Talk to you real soon.